So while everyone is at lunch, it's pretty quiet here right now. And I know I've mentioned that my dryer is disassembled. So I kind of just have a temporary setup of what I have going on here. But for the purpose of this video, I went ahead and like preloaded some t-shirts. So we're printing tags on these. And so because we don't want to inside out the shirts, this is literally how I have it set up. And you can see there's a mark. So we measure, we have marks on here for a reason. So all of these are marked and I just literally, the interface on this thing is so freaking easy. So you can just like index over, but anyways, so again, they're all marked. So I know where the tag is gonna print. I have my registrations taped off, all of that. We use a cool gray 11 on medium to oddball color shirts that cool gray six doesn't work on but we usually use cool gray six on most lighter colors just because we don't want it to bleed through the shirt and we also just usually do one pass on cool gray six but on this you'll see that i'll be doing two passes for the cool gray 11. Um, but again just for the video i kind of wanted to just have some shirts preloaded because i'm just one human and i'm trying my best here so here on the prodigy you're going to say that you have multiple shirts um, and I'm just gonna literally run it as an auto print just to kind of show y'all and Because I don't have a dryer in this section anymore. I do but I don't you get it uh, We are gonna flash and stack so when they come over here I'm just gonna stack them and the flash you can see I only have it set up for 50% and This is because I don't want the collars to burn. I don't need to cure the ink. I just need to make it where it's dry to the touch so we can stack the shirts. So I don't want to run this at 100%. There's no reason to. We're not like print flash printing. We're not doing anything wild. This is solely so I can effectively quickly print without insiding out shirts and go on with my life. So I'm going to go ahead and do an auto print. So it's going to already register that there's a shirt, which it's printing its shirt. And you can see it's going around. And there's the flash. You can see it going. Cool, and then once it gets here, oh, see, that one was actually a little bit too low. So as it gets here, it's a little bit too low. I wanted to stop the press. So it's because it was on auto, we stopped the press. So this shirt was, like, even though we measured it, it actually needs to go up a little bit more. This is the problem with a lot of shirts because they're not all made 100% exactly the same. So. But, however, the ink is, is dry to the touch, so we can stack these on top of each other before we run them through the dryer. But all the shirts are not made the same by any means, so we're going to just index this one over. Look at that one. Perfect. So the space is perfect. So this is, we've been having this problem a lot lately because the shirt consistencies are not the same depending on where they're made from. Like, these are made in Mexico, um, but... Like, I, the measurements don't really lie, and, you know, we have them marked on both, but some, like, I could probably load a shirt on here, and it's going to be fine. This one's great, you know, so sometimes it's like that. It happens. So, again, I'm just flashing and stacking. Again, I'm doing this one-handed, too, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to rotate this back so it can go... And since there's only one shirt on here left, and there's none on this palette... I'm going to change this to just one t-shirt, so then that way it'll actually, like, stop. So, these are going to keep going around. Let me zoom back a little bit. So, this one is fine. This one's also a little high. That one's too high. So, now, okay, look, this is a great situation. So, this one is beautiful. This one is too high. So this one, I would not want my client to receive this, which because we did not cure this yet at all, we barely flashed it. Yes, the ink is a little bit dry to the touch. Nothing is coming off. We can spray this out. No big deal. Accidents happening. There is a learning curve. So now I'm just going to do a mental note that, hey, head six, and now I don't remember what the other one was, but I'm going to put a little mental note that head six, you know, might be a little bit too low and maybe to bump the shirt up a little bit. Or this could be sewn a little bit thicker than another one. Um, you know, you and look, this one's actually entered, like, put on here lower than the line and this one printed beautifully so again we're gonna go spray this one out we use acetone you can use your chemical you can do whatever you want to do no no harm no foul um, since I'm gonna walk over there to spray those out I'm gonna go ahead and run these shirts through the dryer 
So we're gonna come on over here to the dryer and I'm gonna set aside the ugly one that I'm not happy with. And again, I'm doing this one-handed, so I am like ultimately like trying my best right now. Ah! Good thing our dryer is huge. So you gotta open these up so the tags can dry. Oh, this is really, really difficult with one hand. So difficult. Oh my goodness, they're going through the dryer. Normally these would be much better <laughs> with me not doing this stuff one-handed so just need to make sure it's open enough so they can cure it through the dryer we always keep our dryer temp about 320 there we go there we go there we go all right we're doing it we're doing it our dryer temp is always 320 um our belt speed will kind of range between 14 and 16 um a lot of people have asked we have a pretty big uh, like a pretty long run up and especially because we are running two automatic presses so that's like pretty important uh, we do have a pretty big run up and it goes through the dryer and they're gonna come out over here which I'm gonna go grab that ugly one that I was unhappy with so I can spray it out go back over here the shop is a disaster I don't even want to squeeze through there But normally I would print all of the shirts at one time, leave all the ones that I was unhappy with to the side so I could spray them all out at one time. And voila, there we go. And we'll go over here, spray those, but those are all be stacked, they're all the same size. And then this one that got messed up, no big deal, it's not the end of the world, we all make mistakes. We're gonna spray it out and then redo it after it dries. And I don't wanna make y'all suffer through this very loud noise, but if you're a screen printer or are looking for solutions on how to get ink out of apparel that you're wearing or an accident or whatever, get a spray gun, invest in a spray gun. And we use acetone, like literally acetone from Home Depot. We have some down here, literally just normal acetone. Super easy, no big deal. So I'm gonna spray this out and then I'm gonna go back to printing and I'll time lapse. Uh, me printing over there on the Prodigy for you guys. So I just sprayed it out. You can see that it's still, you know, a little damp. Um, because it's gray, the shirt's gray, it's, you literally can't even tell anything happened. And this will dry pretty quick. So by the time I'm like back over there and back to working, you know, we just, they're all the shirts are the same size that we're printing in the gray so it's not like again the end of the world you got to be a problem solver in this industry and things happen sometimes so i'm gonna go back to printing these um and then come back and i'll film i'll go grab my uh phone mount so y'all can see how i kind of do it and knock out this small pile right here Okay, so I'm coming out of time lapse because I literally just loaded my very last shirt. Um, I know it probably was moving pretty fast, but at the same time, there really wasn't that many shirts. And this, when you get a good flow going, and if somebody was pulling, I could go even faster. But, you know, it's just me by myself. Um, so I kind of just pull the collar gently, like, over the sleeve palette area. Again, this is for small quantity um, you know tags so we're just looking and to kind of talk about this screen right now I'm not running a flood bar which is probably again not my like 
most in favor but because I have to change ink colors a lot and I'm using a very 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 small amount of ink I'm just not even running a flood bar but you can see on the screen that I have two other tags also burned on here so I run one facing this direction I run the other two uh, you know to ro so I can rotate this screen and I always put the biggest size in the middle so the youth extra large that I have to print is the size that's in the middle so then that way I have more ability to load like the necklines a lot quicker um, and I was using glue uh, we use Sprayway 384 we used to use cami webbing um, but they our vendors like no longer like are able to get it at this time so now I'm you know I have a foot pedal so I sent it it's gonna do the last pass I forgot to shut the shirt off so I'm just gonna do it now and then go ahead and put on auto print um, because really they just need to run a few more so y'all can kind of see and if someone is pulling for you and someone and you're loading or vice versa, I mean, you can set it up on auto with a dwell time and y'all can just, you like see all these like turned out really great. And y'all can just like really like move pretty fast. So back to what I was doing is run these through the dryer. I'm going to rotate the screen, tape off what I'm not like, tape off what I'm done printing in the meantime, and then go to one of my next sizes. I have two sizes of these. I have uh, youth extra large and I have youth medium, I believe in here. And this is also a fabric blend. So the verbiage on the tag is completely different than these. So you got, that's something you gotta keep up with as well. Now that I had both hands and I was all finished, you can see they come through the dryer much quicker, much nicer. <laughs> so um, we go ahead and let them get caught right here. We always have, we have a fan here, which is kind of being blocked by boxes, but we do have a fan here to help with the belt cooling. Um, again, because we have a pretty long outlet um, and we have another fan here, we don't really have too many problems with ink staying wet or like impressing like or imprinting on other garments or anything like that. We also don't really print extremely thick. So, um, but yeah, gonna change out those screens. I'm actually gonna grab lunch myself and then change out those screens and then go on with what I was doing. I wanted to come back to this because um, I just finished all the mediums with the blended fabric. So you can see I used the darker cool gray 11 because we were printing those sport gray shirts. And then here we use the cool gray six um, on these lighter blue shirts. So now I'm about to just put masking tape on the back side of this. So we just clear screen. Um, that way I have the ability to go ahead and tape off this. And I'm a big person on um, reusing things as much as possible. So I usually try to steal the masking tape. Uh, of course, with my nails and stuff, I can't grab it. Uh. For the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna grab it, but normally I would grab, well actually I have to take this off anyways because I'm about to print the extra larges. Oh my gosh, I cannot get this. There it goes, finally, okay. Doing things with one hand is extremely difficult, so, and it's also frustrating. Um, normally, if we were going to be printing a lot, a lot of passes, I want this to focus, it's all like, a lot of passes we wouldn't put masking tape on this stuff because the masking tape does sometimes pull off the emulsion but we don't want that um, so you can see that I have this one taped off I have the registrations taped off which I'm gonna have to get a new piece of tape because that registration area was a lot bigger so we're gonna cover this with this masking tape piece I just took off ah. I don't know how y'all YouTubers do this. You guys must have like a full time film crew or something because doing this stuff one handed is extremely difficult. Okay, so again, I'm a firm believer on repurposing when I can, so I'm taping that off. And now I need to clean this with a screen opener and get a smaller piece of tape to cover up this registration mark and this leftover piece that I have right here. Um, so I'm gonna just grab like a, another piece of masking tape for that. I have like my, actually I'm just gonna grab some clear tape. Makes it a little easier. All right, I'm gonna set this down for a second. Okay, anyways, so grabbing some clear tape to cover up, like I said, that registration mark. Oops. There we go. 
cover up the registration mark and that leftover text that wasn't covered. All right, just rub that on there real good. And because we're just not printing that many pieces, we don't really have to worry about too much residue um, sticking to the screen or anything like that. But just to make this section like pretty short and sweet, I don't have to change the color to print this middle one that I'm gonna be printing in this section here. Uh, I do obviously have to clean the screen, but I kind of wanted to show y'all like on here how easy it is. Uh, you can just go to heads and you see the range and you want to be on head one. So originally the range was like a half of an inch all the way up to the four inches because the half inch is the distance from the end right here. And so you can see how the screen kind of like comes out further than the squeegee is enabling to go. Um, let me zoom back my fold my phone back a little bit farther. So that means we want the we want the print to start about right here and then go to here. So on range, we can probably try to start it at like 2, 2.5, enter, and then change this to about maybe to six, you know, and try it out. And the great thing is you can test it. So you click here, rear front. Oh, you actually have to, sorry, that was my fault. You have to be out of the clear screen menu. So you go back, uh, rear front, and you can see how far the squeegee is gonna go. And if you're like, you look at it and you're like, okay, it's almost clearing it all, but not quite. So you can look, change this even to like 6.2, enter, you know, and go back. And actually I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and just change this to three because two and a half is still too much. So we're gonna go back to rear front. It's gonna test it. Cool, and if I'm like happy with that, and you can see how there's a little bit of like the cool gray um, 11 still here, but the cool gray six is on this squeegee. So they shouldn't really collide or mix or change my ink color at all because I'm like really, really close in spacing it. Um, I've been doing it like this for a while now, so I have a really good habit of how to do these and how to make it work quickly and effectively. So um, I'm, again, I'm gonna go back to my clear screen option so I can clean under there with screen opener. So I'm gonna get that cleaned up, um, toss just a tiny bit more of ink on there because again, I hate like leaving a bunch of ink on the screen and all that. And since I'm not using a flood bar, I just keep an eye on it. And I only have this really, really small stack of like 24 shirts to print. So I'm gonna do that Okay, really so quick. I already got that all cleaned off. You can see that everything looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and do a test. You go into your, like if you're in the machines, you're gonna go into your heads. You have your test menu here. Obviously make sure your head is on, your number of strokes, all that stuff. So we're gonna click test menu. Um, once we're in the test menu, you can double check. You can see like your ranges, which I already like reduced mine to 3.5. Um, and I bump this up instead of the 6.2 to six and a half, um, just to be safe. So we're gonna go ahead and test print. And it pretty much just goes around. It does not run the flash out of test print. And look, you can see that literally <laughs> how freaking close that cool gray 11 is to the cool gray six squeegee. Um, cool, so you can already see, um, you know, two passes. You can pretty much see everything looks pretty much good enough for a tag. Looks like there's like a little fuzzy right there, but um, so then once that's good and you're happy with it, you know, you might need to make changes or adjust your, uh, I'm sorry, your ranges or your number of strokes. But again, I've been doing these for a little while, so I have this down pretty good. You know, you're gonna go ahead and do a double t-shirt and start loading. You know, just keep in mind that you're gonna be printing up here now and not all the way down here in this spectrum. So we do have to load the t-shirts differently to ensure you know, that you're gonna print in the right place. So you can either A, get a test shirt and you know, make a mark on the palette paper. Um, I like to do one or two of these with a plastic tape like this. So you can't really see it, but there's a clear plastic tape on here. And then I'll teach y'all a little life hack or something that I've done. So there's cl there's clear tape on this. So I don't have to worry about printing on my palette paper because you can already see like the palette is pretty gross. Um, we're not gonna be in this. We're gonna go ahead and go into the test. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that. Test menu again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and send it around for a test. It's not gonna flash it because you don't really want like the tape to like get hot or anything gonna come around and so then now you have this imprint on this palette oh you can't really see it 
which is ideal, I guess. You know, you have this imprint on here. So you're gonna come back in with clear tape again, and you're just gonna cover on top of this. And then you're gonna always, you can, and if you're ever unsure, or you don't wanna like mark your palettes a bunch, but like you putting tape down on your palettes is easier or quicker or like less for you to be worried about, you can literally do a test print on all of your palettes, cover it, um, obviously this doesn't work when you're having to flash multicolor drops. Like I would not recommend it for something like this. But for tags, you know, or just something quick that's one color and you don't have to really worry about like glue too much, like because these are all pretty sticky already. Um, you know, or small batch runs like this, like this is makes it super easy. So I'm gonna cover this with clear tape and then I'm gonna know where to lay every single shirt collar, like each time. Um, and with these, I don't want to do it on that one because it's obviously has wet ink on it. But on these, I actually don't even roll around the edge right here. I just leave it open. Like, oh my god, this is so terrible with one hand. So anyways, you're, it's going to be in this approximate area. But I just open up the collar neckline enough for the imprint to print on it. You know, I don't even worry about pulling it all the way over here or anything like that. So I just you know, lay this as smooth as possible, obviously add some glue and leave it at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going on these and go from there. So and wrap these up because then I will be completely done. Thank goodness. Okay, so I put clear tape and obviously I sprayed a little bit of fast tack on there and I don't really want to pull this up because I only have one hand while filming. So you can see how I just kind of, like I said, open the neckline because I already know it's not going to exceed this point because that tape is under here and I already know it's going to be a good position. And if you're still unsure, cool, let's just run a test real fast. It's going to swing all the way around. And then you can see it's really, really good placement. You don't have to worry about anything. Nothing got on the collar. And normally I would flash and stack. So same thing I would apply here. I'm gonna run this one through the dryer, but you kind of get the general gist of how it would work.